Hello, St. Paul's. Welcome to your midweek message on this day, July 15th, 2020. I'm going to begin with a word of prayer. Uh, I'm going to meditate on our Old Testament lesson for today. And I'll close up with, a, with another prayer. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, work within us that as we hear your word, you would speak what we need to hear today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke up from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, And he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at first. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Right now, we have a lot of questions we're asking ourselves about our identity as a people in this country, in this land. Who are we? And what makes us who we are? What's our relationship to this land? What are our values? In our text for today, we might think about uh, the ways in which Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are like our Washington, Adam, Jefferson, We see these stories in Genesis as the patriarchs, Uh, just like we have imagined uh, some of these men from the founding of our country as the patriarchs of our country. While the stories about them may not be true in the sense of historical accuracy, we use them to speak to perhaps bigger truths about who we are. And here in this story, we hear about Jacob. He's just stolen his birthright from his brother and now is on the run. He's come to this place, a certain place is all we know about it. And he falls asleep and he has this dream. Now maybe you remember this story because of a certain spiritual. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. That slave spiritual, written by people who were enslaved sometime in the 19th century uh, or perhaps in the 18th century, spoke to a desire to get closer and closer to God. The idea being that as you grew in your faith, you would then be growing in your strength and then in your ability to find freedom from slavery, actual literal freedom from bondage. That hymn that we uh, sing then speaks to a story of liberation that the slaves in the United States desired. In our text, Jacob imagines this ladder, what some scholars actually believe is like a staircase, which has angels descending and ascending. It is this embodiment of God touching humanity, God coming to earth, Jacob encountering the living God. But then notice, there are some 
distinct promises. It looks like about three promises that God gives to Jacob in this story. First, God promises that that land where he is sleeping right there, that God is going to give that land to Jacob. But then second, that he will have so many offspring that will be like the dust, almost like how Abraham was promised offspring that would be like the stars and that they'd be scattered to the four corners. That's really a a symbol of just how vast they were going to be, how spread out they really were going to be. But then notice the last, the final blessing that these descendants and Jacob himself would not just be blessed, but they would be for the whole world, for all the families of the world, a blessing. They were blessed so that others could be blessed, in other words. When we imagine God giving land, that's not an abstract thing for us in the United States. We have this long history of imagining that the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob also gave white Europeans this land. The idea of manifest destiny in the 19th century, imagined that that same God gave us the entire North American continent for people who looked like me. And then the idea of the American dream with its close association with the ownership of home and also the ownership of the land on which that home sits, that imagined that God gave us that land. As faithful Christians who desire a society, that would be for all people a a place of um, comfort and justice and um, hope and blessing. That might strike at odds with the history of uh, stealing lands from Native Americans who were here before Europeans arrived. We might recall uh, the shameful history of our government um, producing redlining and taking away Uh, valuable assets from particularly the black community but other brown communities in the United States. And we might notice the unfair way in which affordable housing is built or not built at all in our current society. We are in the process of asking ourselves a lot of questions about identity. For Jacob, I do want to point out the great hope at the end there. After he wakes up from the dream, he realizes that this was a gateway to heaven, that this was uh, the house of God. So he calls it Bethel, house of God. He does that because he realizes that God is with him. It reminds me of the last words of John Wesley, best of all, God is with us. And in that, I think we have a great hope. Perhaps we are given land. Perhaps we are given this by God. But we have to ask ourselves, what's the purpose? Are we given land for our family, our group of people, for us? Or is all that we have for something far beyond us? Do we have what we have so that all might be blessed. Today, we have lots of challenges in our society. We need a source of hope, and God gives us that hope in God's presence. May we have hope, though, that has courage to ask ourselves really tough questions about who we are, what our story is as a society. And how can we change that story by imagining that blessings might be spread not for a few, but for all? Let us find our hope in the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us go to God in prayer for the concerns of the world. Let us pray. Almighty God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and our God as well. Bring us wisdom as we ask tough questions about ourselves. While we know that we are made in your image and called very good, 
we also know that we do not always live up to the good that you would have for us. We imagine places and, sp place places and spaces for our exclusive use. You imagine how our families may benefit not just a community, not just our society, but the entire world. Give us the kind of compassion that would desire the healing of all peoples, not just our community, not just our family. Remind us of your promises for peace and the day of your reign when there will be no more tears. God, most of all, be with us and give us good courage. Amen.